The Sunbeam Tiger is a high-performance V8 version of the British Roots Group's Sunbeam Alpine Roadster, designed in part by American car designer and racing driver Carol Shelby and produced from 1964 until 1967. Shelby had carried out a similar V8 conversion on the AC Cobra, and hoped to be offered the contract to produce the Tiger at his facility in America. Roots decided instead to contract the assembly work to Jensen at West Bromwich in England, and pay Shelby a royalty on every car produced. Two major versions of the Tiger were built, the Series I was fitted with the 260 cubic inches Ford V8. The Series II, of which only 633 were built in the final year of Tiger production, was fitted with a larger Ford 289 cubic inches engine. Two prototype and extensively modified versions of the Series I competed in the 1964-24 Hours of Le Mans, but neither completed the race. Roots also entered the Tiger in European rallies with some success, and for two years it was the American Hot Rod Association's national record holder over a quarter-mile drag strip. Production ended in 1967 soon after the Roots Group was taken over by Chrysler which did not have a suitable engine to replace the Ford V8. Owing to the ease and affordability of modifying the Tiger, there are few surviving cars in standard form. Background The Sunbeam Tiger was a development of the Sunbeam Alpine, introduced by the British manufacturer Roots in 1953. Roots realized that the Alpine needed more power if it was to compete successfully in world markets, but lacked a suitable engine and the resources to develop one. The company therefore approached Ferrari to redesign the standard inline four-cylinder engine, recognizing the sales cachet that powered by Ferrari would be likely to bring. Negotiations initially seemed to go well, but ultimately broke down. In 1962 racing driver and Formula One champion Jack Brabham proposed to Roots competition manager Norman Garrett the idea of fitting the Alpine with a Ford V8 engine, which Garrett relayed to his son Ian then the West Coast sales manager of Roots American Motors Incorporated. Ian Garrett lived close to where Carroll Shelby had his Shelby American operation, which had done a similar V8 conversion for the British AC Cobra. Initial prototypes, according to journalist William Carroll, after measuring the Alpine's engine bay with a precision instrument of questionable antecedents a euro a wooden yardstick a euro Ian Garrett dispatched his service manager Walter McKenzie to visit the local new car dealerships, looking for a V8 engine that might fit. McKenzie returned with the news that the Ford 260 V8 engine appeared to be suitable, which apart from its size advantage was relatively light at 440 pounds. Ian Garrett asked Shelby for an idea of the time scale and cost to build a prototype, which Shelby estimated to be eight weeks and $10,000. He then approached Brian Roots, head of sales for the Roots Group, for funding and authorization to build a prototype, to which Brian Roots agreed. Ian Garrett, impatient to establish whether the conversion was feasible, commissioned racing driver and fabricator Ken Miles to build another prototype as quickly as he could. Miles was provided with a budget of $800, a Series 2 Alpine, a Ford V8 engine and a two-speed automatic transmission, and in about a week he had a running V8 conversion, thus proving the concept. Shelby began work on his prototype, the white car as it came to be known, in April 1963, and by the end of the month it was ready for trial runs around Los Angeles. Ian Garrett and John Panks Director of Roots Motors Incorporated of North America, tested an early version of the car and was so impressed that Panks wrote a glowing report to Brian Roots, we have a tremendously exciting sports car which handles extremely well and has a performance equivalent to in 20k Jaguar. It is quite apparent that we have a most successful experiment that can now be developed into a production car. Provisionally known as the Thunderbolt, the Shelby prototype was more polished than the Miles version, and used a Ford four-speed manual transmission. The Ford V8 was only 3.5 inches longer than the Alpine's four-cylinder engine it replaced, so the primary concern was the engine's width. Like Miles, Shelby found that the Ford V8 would only just fit into the Alpine engine bay. I think that if the figure of speech about the shoehorn ever applied to anything, it surely did to the tight squeak in getting the 260 Ford mill into the Sunbeam engine compartment. There was a place for everything and a space for everything, 
but positively not an inch to spare. Development. All Roots products had to be approved by Lord Roots, who was reportedly very grumpy, when he learned of the work that had gone into the Tiger project without his knowledge. But he agreed to have the Shelby prototype shipped over from America in July 1963 for him and his team to assess. He insisted on driving the car himself, and was so impressed that shortly after returning from his test drive he contacted Henry Ford II directly to negotiate a deal for the supply of Ford V8 engines. Roots placed an initial order for 3,000, the number of Tigers it expected to sell in the first year, the largest single order Ford had ever received for its engines from an automobile manufacturer. Not only did Lord Roots agree that the car would go into production, but he decided that it should be launched at the 1964 New York Motor Show, only eight months away, despite the company's normal development cycle from good idea to delivery of the final product being three to four years. Installing such a large engine in a relatively small vehicle required some modifications, although the exterior sheet metal remained essentially the same as the Alpines. Necessary chassis modifications included moving from the Berman recirculating ball steering mechanism to a more modern rack and pinion system. Although twice as powerful as the Alpine, the Tiger is only about 20% heavier, but the extra weight of the larger engine required some minor suspension modifications. Nevertheless, the Tiger's front-to-back weight ratio is substantially similar to the Alpine's, at 51.7-48.3 front rear. Shortly before its public unveiling at the New York Motor Show in April 1964 the car was renamed from Thunderbolt to Tiger, inspired by Sunbeam's 1925 land speed record holder. Production Shelby had hoped to be given the contract to produce the Tiger in America, but Roots was somewhat uneasy about the closeness of his relationship with Ford, so it was decided to build the car in England. The Roots factory at Wrighton did not have the capacity to build the Tiger, so the company contracted the job to Jensen in West Bromwich. Any disappointment Shelby may have felt was tempered by an offer from Roots to pay him an undisclosed royalty on every Tiger built. Jensen was able to take on production of the Tiger because its assembly contract for the Volvo P1800 had recently been cancelled. An additional factor in the decision was that Jensen's chief engineer Kevin Beatty and his assistant Mike Jones had previously worked for Roots, and understood how the company operated. The first of 14 Jensen-built prototypes were based on the Alpine three-body shell, until the Series 4 became available at the end of 1963. The Tiger went into production in June 1964, little more than a year after the completion of the Shelby prototype. Painted and trimmed bodies were supplied by pressed steel in Oxfordshire, and the engines and gearboxes directly from Ford in America. Installing the engine required some unusual manufacturing methods, including using a sledgehammer to bash in part of the already primed and painted bulkhead to allow the engine to be slid into place. Jensen was soon able to assemble up to 300 Tigers a month, which were initially offered for sale only in North America. The first few Tigers assembled had to be fitted with a Borg Warner four-speed all-synchromesh manual gearbox, until Ford resolved its supply problems and was able to provide an equivalent unit as used in the Ford Mustang. Several performance modifications were available from dealers. The original 260 CID engine was considered only mildly tuned at 164 horsepower, and some dealers offered modified versions with up to 245 horsepower for an additional $250. These modifications were particularly noticeable to the driver above 60 mph, although they proved problematic for the standard suspension and tires, which were perfectly tuned for the stock engine. A 1965 report in the British magazine Motorsport concluded that no combination of an American V8 and a British chassis could be happier. Versions Production reached 7128 cars over three distinct series. The factory only ever designated two, the Series I and Series II, but as the official Series I production spanned the change in body style from the Series IV Alpine panels to the Series V panels, the later Series I cars are generally designated Series IA by some Beam Tiger enthusiasts. The Series II Tiger, fitted with a larger 4 289 cubic inches, was intended exclusively for export to America and was never marketed in the UK 
although six right-hand drive models were sold to the Metropolitan Police for use in traffic patrols and high-speed pursuits. Four more went to the owners of important Roots dealerships. All Tigers were fitted with a single four twin choke carburetor. The compression ratio of the larger Series 2 engine was increased from the 8.81 of the smaller block to 9.31. Other differences between the versions included upgraded valve springs, an engine oil cooler, an alternator instead of a dynamo, a larger single dry plate hydraulically operated clutch, wider ratio transmission, and some rear axle modifications. There were also cosmetic changes, speed stripes instead of chrome strips down the side of the car, a modified radiator grille, and removal of the headlamp cowls. All Tigers were fitted with the same 4.5-in wide steel disc bolt-on wheels as the Alpine 4, and Dunlop RS5 4.90 in a 13-in cross-ply tires. The lack of space in the Tiger's engine bay causes a few maintenance problems. The left bank of spark plugs is only accessible through a hole in the bulkhead for instance, normally sealed with a rubber bung, and the oil filter had to be relocated from the lower left on the block to a higher position on the right-hand side, behind the generator. Equals series I equals, the Ford V8 as fitted to the Tiger produced 164 bhp at 4400 rpms, sufficient to give the car a 0 a Euro 60 miles per hour time of 8.6 seconds and a top speed of 120 miles per hour. The Girling manufactured brakes used 9.85 in discs at the front and 9 in drums at the rear. The suspension was independent at the front, using coil springs, and at the rear had a live axle and semi-elliptic springs. Apart from the addition of a panned rod to better locate the rear axle, and stiffer front springs to cope with the weight of the V8 engine, the Tiger's suspension and braking systems are identical to that of the standard Alpine. The fitting points for the panned rod interfered with the upright spare wheel in the boot, which was repositioned to lie horizontally beneath a false floor. The battery was moved from beneath the rear seat to the boot at the same time. The cob weight of the car increased from the 2,220 pounds of the standard Alpine to 2,653 pounds. In 1964, its first year of production, all but 56 of the 1649 Series I Tigers assembled were shipped to North America, where it was priced at $3,499. In an effort to increase its marketability to American buyers the car was fitted with powered by four 260 badges on each front wing beneath the Tiger logo. The Series I was unavailable in the UK until March 1965, when it was priced at a £1,446. It was also sold in South Africa for a 3350, badged as the Sunbeam Alpine 260. Equals Series 2 equals, priced at $3,842, the Series 2 Tiger was little more than a re-engined Mark IA. By comparison, a contemporary V8 Ford Mustang sold for $2,898. The larger 289 cubic inches Ford engine improved the Tiger's 0 a Euro 60 miles per hour time to 7.5 seconds, and increased the top speed to 122 miles per hour. Officially the Series 2 Tiger was only available in the US, where it was called the Tiger 2. By the time the Series 2 car went into production Chrysler was firmly in charge of routes, and the powered by Ford shields were replaced by Sunbeam V8 badges. Demise Routes had always been insufficiently capitalized, and losses resulting from a damaging 13-week strike at one of its subsidiaries, British and Light Steel Pressings, coupled with the expense of launching the Hillman Imp, meant that by 1964 the company was in serious financial difficulties. At the same time, Chrysler was looking to boost its presence in Europe, and so a deal was struck in June 1964 in which Chrysler paid a £12.3 million for a large stake in Roots, although not a controlling one. As part of the agreement Chrysler committed not to acquire a majority of Roots voting shares without the approval of the UK government, which was keen not to see any further American ownership of the UK motor industry. In 1967 Minister of Technology Anthony Wedgwood Ben approached BMH and Leyland to see if they would buy out Chrysler and Roots and keep the company British, but neither had the resources to do so. 
Later that year Chrysler was allowed to acquire a controlling interest in routes for a further investment of a £20 million. Manufacturing a car powered by a competitor's engine was unacceptable to the new owner, but Chrysler's own 273 small block V8 was too large to fit under the Tiger's bonnet without major modifications. Compounding the problem, the company's small block V8 engines had the distributor positioned at the rear, unlike the front-mounted distributor of the Ford V8. Chrysler's big block V8 had a front-mounted distributor but was significantly larger. Shortly after the takeover Chrysler ordered that production of the Tiger was to end when root stock of Ford V8 engines was exhausted. Jensen assembled the last Tiger on June 27, 1967. Chrysler added its Pentastar logo to the car's badging, and in its marketing literature de-emphasized the Ford connection, simply describing the Tiger as having an American V8 powertrain. Roots design director Roy Axe commented later that the Alpine and Tiger were always oddballs in the Roots range. I think they, Chrysler didn't understand it, or have the same interest in it as the family cars a Euro I think it was as simple as that. The Tiger name was resurrected in 1972 when Chrysler introduced the Avenger Tiger, a limited edition modified Hillman Avenger intended primarily for rallying. Competition History Three racing Tigers were constructed for the 1964 24 Hours of Le Mans, a prototype and two that were entered in the race. Costing $45,000 each, they were highly modified versions of the production cars, fitted with fastback coupe bodies produced by Lister. But they were still steel monocoques, and made the Le Mans Tigers 66 pounds heavier than a road going Tiger at 2,615 pounds almost 600 pounds more than the winning Ferrari. The standard Ford four-speed manual transmission was replaced with a Borg Warner T10 close ratio racing transmission, which allowed for a top speed of 140 miles per hour. Both Tigers suffered early mechanical failures, and neither finished the race. The engines had been prepared by Shelby but had not been properly developed, and as a result overheated. Shelby eventually refunded the development cost to Roots. All three of the Le Mans Tigers have survived. Once Roots had made the decision to put the Tiger into production an Alpine 4 minus engine and transmission was shipped to Shelby, who was asked to transform the car into a racing Tiger. Shelby's competition Tiger made an early appearance in the B production class of Pacific Coast Division SCCA races, which resulted in some highly successful publicity for the new car. But Shelby was becoming increasingly preoccupied with development work for Ford, and so the racing project was transferred to the Hollywood sports car dealership, whose driver Jim Adams achieved a third place finish in the Pacific Coast Division in 1965. A Tiger driven by Peter Bolton and Jim Latter finished 12th overall and first in the small GT class at the 1965 Dayton Continental. The Tiger was also raced on quarter mile drag strips and for two years was the American Hot Rod Association's national record holder, reaching a speed of 108 miles per hour in 12.95 seconds. Roots entered the Tiger in European rallies, taking first, second and third places in the 1964 Geneva Rally. Two Tigers took part in the 1965 Monte Carlo Rally, one finishing fourth overall, the highest placing by a front-engined rear-wheel drive car, and the other eleventh. After finally having sorted out the engine overheating problem by fitting a Ford-facing air scoop to the bonnet, Roots entered three Tigers in the 1965 Alpine Rally, one of which crossed the finishing line as outright winner. Scrutineers later disqualified the car however, because it had been fitted with undersized cylinder head valves. By the end of the 1966 Acropolis Rally though, it had become clear that low-slung sports cars such as the Tiger were unsuited to the increasingly rough terrain rally stages, and the car was withdrawn from competition soon after. In the words of Ian Hall, who drove the Tiger in the Acropolis Rally, I felt that the Tiger had just had it a Euro it was an out-of-date Leviathan. In popular media The 1965 Tiger series I gained some exposure on American television as the car of choice for Maxwell Smart in the spoof spy series Get Smart. The Tiger was used for the first two seasons in the opening credits, in which Smart screeched to a halt outside his headquarters, and was used through the remainder of the series in several episodes. 
Some of the scenes featured unusual modifications such as a retractable James Bond-style machine gun that could not have fitted under the Tiger's bonnet, so rebadged Alpine models were used instead. Don Adams, who played the protagonist Maxwell Smart, gained possession of the Tiger after the series ended and later gave it to his daughters. It is reportedly on display at the Playboy Mansion in Los Angeles. During its early years Roots advertised the car extensively in Playboy magazine and lent a pink tiger with matching interior to 1965 Playmate of the Year Joe Collins for a year. The tiger also featured in the 2008 film adaptation of the Get Smart TV series. A replica tiger had to be constructed using a stock Sunbeam Alpine and recreated tiger badging as no available tiger could be found in Canada, where the film was produced. The production team recorded the sound of an authentic tiger owned by a collector in Los Angeles and edited it into the film. References, Notes, Citations, Bibliography, External Links, J. Lino's Garage Euro 1965 Sunbeam Tiger, The Sunbeam Tiger Owners Club, Sunbeam Tiger Owners Association, Tigers United.